Yes, you're still on to daybreak, and now is the interview segment. And in this uh, interview segment, we want to look at the 27.5 trillion naira appropriation bill, or rather the budget of 2024, that is being passed uh, to the National Assembly by the presidency to look through, you know, for next year. Now I have with me an entrepreneur in the studio to discuss uh, this particular issue and look at how the National Assembly is going to assess it you know, while looking at where the money should actually go to, you know, because uh, most times uh, monies on the budget are being budgeted and then they are all spent on paying salaries, you know, on st things that are not meant for be as, as especially, except if we're going to go further by than that, we're going to do on capital spending. If we want to improve on what we want to do, we have to do capital spending. So I have with me Adirati Manel to discuss this. So good morning. You're welcome. Inside. So um, now I want to look at this budget. You understand? Um, for me, capital spending is supposed to be the in thing for any budget. A lot of countries, uh, many people think that Nigerian's budget is the biggest or whatever. But if you look at some other claims, their budgets are way, way further than us. But what they do is that they make sure that the spending and this, from this budget goes to their capital spending. That building their industries, building their textile industries, building their agricultural industries, building their tech industries, building entrepreneurship, building every other thing to make sure that, okay, even if they borrowed the money to finance these budgets, the, these sectors will make the money back and we continue to make it. They don't need to go back to it again. So maybe the next time, any other budget is going to be for some other things, maybe healthcare, maybe for some other things. Education is there and all these things. But the Nigerian government, over the years, their concentration has always been on just paying salaries. Paying salaries. Uh, like uh, a governor once said, he said uh, food uh, 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 stomach infrastructure. You understand? That is what he was doing for all the years he actually was there as a state governor. He was doing stomach infrastructure, which is totally out of the out of place. So, where and where? What and what do you think the National Assembly sh will be doing? Should be doing now. In the process of ap approving this particular budget. Well, um, the executive arm of government in their wisdom have um, tapped the current um, proposed 2024 budget as the budget of renewed hope okay and um, i haven't looked you know in-depthly at the at the budget you know but um i have um, looked at summaries of it i've um, taking a glance as, at it, you know, as it were. And um, I, I think that um, they made a huge mistake calling it the renewed hope. budget of renewed hope because mm -hmm. there's, nothing, there's nothing in the budget that um, inspires any hope whatsoever. Now, um, having said that, having said that, the the size of a budget is not as important as the use of the budget okay if if you're a salary and uh, you have a family of five okay and um, your take home at the end of every month is a hundred thousand mm. okay it will make absolutely no sense if you use 100 and i mean if you use them um, eighty thousand of the hundred thousand you earn, if you use it, if you spend it on feeding alone, you'll be one of the most unwise men, you know, on earth. And if you have a budget of twenty-seven point five trillion, and you say that this budget is supposed to inspire hope, is the budget of renewed hope, okay? And you say that one of the main things you want to do is to alleviate poverty, okay? Is to is to bridge the gap between the haves and the have-nots. And then you have only 2% of that budget, okay, allocated to fighting poverty, allocated, you know, to giving any form of succor whatsoever to the common man. Then I do not see where the hope is coming from. Now, you have a budget of 2.75 
I mean, 27.5 trillion, okay, as it were. And come year 2024, your, um, what was it called? Your payments on salaries is tripling, if not quadrupling, which means that majority of the budget is going to be spent, you know, on paying salaries. Mm. You know, you have an estimated um, revenue, You've, you are estimating that you'd be able to generate about 18 point something trillion or there about eight points, eight points, sorry, nine, yeah, 8.7 trillion is what you've said that um, you're hoping to be able to generate. Now, if you're saying that you're going to be able to generate 8.8 .8 trillion naira, okay, which means that the other sum has to come from somewhere. And we know that the government has the habit of borrowing, okay? Already a huge chunk, you know, of your proposed budget is going to servicing debts, existing debts. Now, if you're going to have to add to that, then it means that even your budget is not even enough, you know, to do anything in the first place. So we begin to wonder, you know, what um, the government is actually thinking. And then the scary part of it is that the Senate, you know, seem to be in bed with the executive arm of government. You know, mm -hmm. so we just hope that this would not um, be like the immediate past, um, you know, Senate that was more or less a rubber stamp for the executive. We sincerely hope not, because otherwise I do not see... I do not see any way this, um, this budget gets assent from the National Assembly. Well, uh, you just said it all. Now, first of all, you mentioned uh, the theme for it, uh, you know, and um, uh, I, I didn't really want that. I, I didn't want to mention that because already that was what was mentioned just before this administration came into power. And um, uh, people are already seeing the uh, renewed hope in seeing hopelessness in the renewed hope. So if uh, the budget of 2024 is called a renewed hope, that means that we're actually hopelessly waiting for something that may not, uh, you know, bear any form of fruit. And you just mentioned there now, the budget for next year to pay salaries from April next year is 24.66 trillion naira, which is heavy very heavy very much and that is just for a year so for like four years we'll be spending 24.66 trillion naira every year and it is not that nigeria is making any money close to that that's from our internally generated revenues we're not making any money from that we are borrowing more money from the outside to show up all these things and we're also going to be doing what is called debt servicing which means that the 27.5 trillion naira is also going to be a mark for the debt servicing out there. So well, what my question to you again is, what should the federal government be, what in line, in what line do you think they should be thinking now? Or the Senate or the National Assembly be thinking now? Because uh, I see the National Assembly as the voice of the people, but though they are not talking for the people anymore, they are talking for their pockets. What should be what should they be saying at the present concerning this budget? Well, um, first, first and first and foremost, we we need to we need to do a reality check, okay, as a nation, mm. okay, and then we need to we need to begin to cut down on sustainable trends. Now, what do I mean by unsustainable on sustainable trends? The trend of having to continually you know borrow the trend of having you know to to um spend more than we earn you know we need to find a way of checkmating these things we need to find a way of realistically increasing our ability to raise revenue do you understand and one of the ways that we can do that is by promoting nigerian made goods Nigeria meets services, mm. you know, and um, there it would it would shock you that that for consultancy jobs that um, we have overqualified, you know, Nigerians for you still have 
you know, government establishments bringing in expatriates, you know, to consult for such services. Now, we're not even talking of goods. We're talking of intellectual know-how. Do you understand? Service, prov service provision. You know, you have experts, you know, people that are authorities in these fields, people that, um, you know, get invited by other nations and all that to give papers on these things. And when it is mm. the turn of our government, you know, when we'll these services are... Together. And they go outside to then bring... These things do not make sense. These things are not sustainable. So first and foremost, let us find a way to cut down on our need to borrow. On our need to borrow because it seems like it seems like we do not um, we do not um, have any other any other um, way of thinking you know thinking out of the box than to borrow now borrowing is a shortcut it is not a lasting solution because rather than take you out of a problem you know it actually increases the problem without really solving it you know, so you 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 are owing a man a hundred naira, okay? Then you borrow two hundred and fifty naira to sort out the hundred naira and pay other bills. Do you understand? The problem of indebtedness is still there. Now, rather than owing a hundred naira, your level of indebtedness is now a hundred and fifty naira. I mean, it's now two hundred and fifty naira plus whatever interest is on top of that. Mm. Do you understand? And before you know it, it becomes a vicious cycle that is difficult to get out of. And that's sad. You know, um, just uh, recently, um, I I'm sure you have heard of that 2.17 trillion naira was, uh, uh, you know, approved by the same National Assembly for the supplementary budget of 2023. And uh, I am very sure... And that's just a couple of weeks ago. And that's a couple of weeks ago. I am very sure that by next year, by the time we get to the middle of next year, or the third uh, quarter of next year, another uh, supplementary budget will come out. That I'm very sure of. It is going to come out. And then, now you talked about countries investing and investing in themselves, investing in what they can use to show up revenues for their companies, for their countries. The government, the successive government, even till this government, seems to have failed in all ramifications. Now, I want to look at this politically now. Does it mean that all our politicians who over the year have seen recyclements of them from one party to the other, some have remained in one party, but then some have moved from one party to the next party to the next party and then come back to the other party again, whichever they go, and it has turned to a career for them to make money into their pocket. Does it mean that none of them had the interest of this country at heart? Um, well, I, I, you would have to, it's only God that can answer that question, because <laughs> uh, um, I'm not in the hearts of any of them. And then um, to be fair to the leaders of this country there are a lot of there are a lot of things okay a lot of challenges that that um, they face that are peculiar to us especially you know in this climb you know which um, does not make their work easy so i do not envy them at all but having said that you see there, there are a lot of things that a country can do okay to bring a turn around let me give you an instance okay mm. The world is clamoring for climate change and all that. Mm. Okay, we are saying that we need to move away from petroleum products, you know, and look um, at the green environment and all that. Okay, my company just secured a multi-billion dollar deal, okay, with a foreign country, okay, for electric vehicles and all of that. Um, now, ordinarily, in other climes, this is something that any government would jump at. This is something that banks will be queuing you know to finance to get it done and all of that you know especially when what you need is you know as little as 150 200 million and all that but you go to a bank or you go to a government agency your documents will be there for the next 10 years and nothing would happen do you understand and nothing would happen now this 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 there are several initiatives like that there are several nigerians 
with businesses like that, with opportunities like that, you know, that the system does not allow them to thrive. The system does not allow them to move forward. Do you understand? Now, imagine that um, we, we as Nigerians are now able to manufacture our own vehicles, not just our own vehicles, but 100% solar and electric, I mean, and electricity powered. Do you understand? So it now means that you don't have to go to the filling station to buy fuel at 500, 600 and something Naira anymore. Those you just days, need to plug in your those car Those days are gone. It. You just charge your vehicle overnight, just the same as you do with your phone. And it carries you for the whole day. Do you understand? Uh -huh. And as a backup, you have solar, solar panels that are attached to the vehicle and it can take you from point A to point B. You know, usually these are things that um, other countries will jump at and all of that. But instead, what you have are bottlenecks. It is difficult raising finance. And the same is applicable in the agricultural sector. The same is applicable in the textile. Mm. You know, I have, mm. I, have, I, have, um, I have a friend that had this amazing, amazing idea some years, you know, back about homegrown cutting you know, equipment, you know, wonderful idea. Do we see grow cuttings in Nigeria? Well, I, I, I do not know because mm -hmm. the person I'm talking about right now has left the country. Mm. He tried and tried and tried and tried and rather than lose his mind, he decided to jackpot. Do you understand? Eh, so imagine someone like me. Okay, at the end of the day, you run up and down, you lose a multi-billion dollar deal because of a few millions of Naira and all of that. Who is to say that I would also not consider Jack Marin at the end of the day? God help us in this country. Well, it's really God help us. And uh, yes, uh, I, I, now let us uh, look at these other aspects too now. Uh, you just raised the issue of, uh, you know, our different sectors that can actually be improved. Uh, um, for me, I see Nigerians as hardworking people, as very. people who think uh, positively all the time. They think of the next thing to do. They are very creative. But the government has... Uh, found a way to continuously put them in a particular place. Um, okay, so like you just mentioned now, something is coming and you just need this little thing for it to be accessed and then it will benefit everybody. The old issue. But because some few set of persons want some kind of thing in their pocket or they don't see that because, uh, okay, uh, let me cite this example. The government says they gave monies to 18 companies last year for the production of fertilizers. And I cannot mention that amount on air. A very huge sum of our money. But nothing came out of all these places. Nothing at all. And nobody... And heads nothing. Are no heads rolled. Nothing happened. It just... If, I, I'm not even sure if those companies are actually in existence. <laughs> uh, because I have heard the issues of, uh, you know, uh, uh, do you know that uh, these persons are this and that? The office was just established yesterday, but yet they had plenty of shares, people, money bumping into that. It happened during the passenger era. Mm -hmm. You understand me? It happened at that time. And I'm sure it will still happen now. So let us look at the sincerity of government in handling issues, in handling some of these things, economic issues, political issues, government-related issues. Because the way the country is heading to now, it's heading to a precipice, a level where we are now at the edge. We are just at the cliff about to fall. That is where the, 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 uh, this uh, particular country is. You see, you keep... You keep mentioning government sincerity government sincerity government sincerity okay and um <laughs> i keep trying you know not to not to um touch on that subject but mm. let me let me make an illo an illustration on air okay um one of the ways you identify a wise man for instance a wise family man is that he will do everything within his power to make sure that he does not have more children than his current status can cater for. Do you understand? Mm. Uh -huh, you know, and um, that's, um, that would be wisdom. Okay, so you, you, you are a salary earner, you are a father. 
okay, and your salary at the moment is 200,000, you know, a month. And you have two children already. Mm -hmm. and now, um, part time, you know how much it is you pay for these children. You know what it takes, you know, for you to maintain your home and all that. If madame comes and says, Oga, I need more picking, you tell her, go and find a job first. <laughs> when you also start earning. <laughs> Do you understand? It is common sense. It is common sense. You know, and that is you being sincere with yourself and being sincere with your family. Now, but if you now have a government, okay, that, you know, is over bloated. It's not just bloated, it is over bloated. You have a lot of unnecessary offices, you know, and people occupying those offices. You know, you have a lot of a lot of um, a lot of um, parastatals, you know, that are doing virtually the same thing as others. Appointments too. Do you understand? Too many appointments. Duplicities. You have Everywhere. offices that have been duplicated over and over and over again. You know, sincerity in government would mean that you sit yourself down and you begin to cut down on all of these things. Do you understand? You look at Ministry A and Ministry B and you say, okay, no, this is what you are doing, this is what you are doing. You people are doing the same thing now. Oh yeah, match them together and downsize when necessary. Yes. Do you understand? You know, that is what we should be doing. That is where sincerity, you know, starts from. But when you have a government where a particular leader has somebody as the the um, special advisor for social media, special advisor for new media, special advisor for old media, you begin to wonder... And the special uh, advisors will have their do own Do you understand? And advisors. these special advisors also have advisors. The advisors have assistants. The do assistants have their own... You know, and it does not make any sense. It does not make any sense. You know, and then you wonder why we are having to pay salaries, you know, as high as 25 you know, 0.6 trillion naira. It makes absolutely no sense, especially for a country whose who's, um, anticipated revenue, you know, is just about 8.2 trillion naira or thereabouts. And it is anticipated. So which means that there's every tendency that you would not even eat that mark, no matter how hard uh, yeah. you try. Do you understand? So let us start by controlling things that are within our power. And what are the things that are within our power? What we spend money on? How we spend these monies? The size of our government. Our government is too large. We need to cut it down. Adirati, please, I'll have to stop here. Uh, yes, the government is too large. We need to cut a whole lot of things down. The appointments, the ministries, the agencies, we need to cut them down. Merge some put some together, cut away a lot of these things. Not because of, uh, okay, ah, these people supported me, that person supported me, and all that. So you have to put everybody there to just squander, I will use that word, squander the uh, country's uh, resources, whether borrowed or not borrowed. Well, that's the much we can take on this particular segment. Thank you so much, Adirati Malia, for coming today. That's the much we can take here. We'll go for a very short break, and I'll be right back. <laughs>